I want to talk about Colleen Ballinger and the dangerous power dynamics in parasocial relationships. Now, if you haven't heard, Colleen Ballinger was accused of grooming children. So she wrote a children's song. So a lot of people are saying some things about me that aren't quite true. Doesn't matter if it's true though, just as long as it's entertaining to you. I've seen some horrible apology videos in my day, from Laura Lee's Waterworks to Sienna May's Interpretive Dance to Logan Paul's PR campaign. People are out here. But this is the first time that I've seen someone with serious allegations bust out an ukulele. If you don't know who Colleen Ballinger is, congratulations. Everything I have learned about this woman has been against my will. Colleen is known for her character Miranda Sings, who is this parody of untalented theater kids who have delusions of stardom. She's got nearly 20 million followers across multiple YouTube channels, created the Netflix series Haters Back Off, and was even in the Broadway musical Waitress. Now, if you've never seen the Miranda Sings comedy, once again, congratulations. I don't get it, but I'm also not the demographic for it because the audience is predominantly underage. Now, in 2020, very serious allegations came out against Colleen by 17-year-old Adam McIntyre with various claims of sexually inappropriate behavior, emotional abuse, and manipulation. According to Adam, he was a fan since 2012, but he developed a more personal relationship with Colleen in 2016, and that by the following year, they became good friends. Now keep in mind, Adam was 13, while Colleen was already in her 30s during this friendship. Adam's video outlines several allegations, but for the sake of this, I only want to address the most serious ones. Primarily that Colleen was emotionally manipulative, abusive, and groomed him as well as other children. Adam, as well as other underage fans, were a part of a private group chat called Colleenies Weenies. Now he said that Colleen would enter the chat and talk about her sex life, emotionally dump on the weenies during her divorce, basically using a group of children as her own personal therapy, as well as mobilize all of them to harass her ex-husband, who she privately accused of abuse. Adam also states that when he was around 14 or 15, she had sent him lingerie in the mail in what she insists was a joke and completely stupid. To support these allegations, Adam provided screenshots where Colleen would ask him, are you a virgin? Or what's your fave sex position when he was doing a Q&A? There's also a screenshot where Adam mentions that they felt their ass look good that day and Colleen chimed in asking for pics. Several former fans said that when they were minors, they would video chat with Colleen as often as five times a week for several hours at a time. And that often these conversations were about her ex-husband. Now, shortly after the accusations in 2020, Colleen did make a public apology video called Addressing Everything. This was positively received by the public because she acknowledged some of Adam's accusations as well as these other instances of racism and bigotry from past videos. And she did seem to take accountability using language like, this is all my fault, that was completely stupid, and it was okay. But in the last few years, Adam has remained vocal that despite Colleen's public behavior, she has privately tried to silence him, refused to give him a personal private apology, and that this behavior is not isolated to just him, but a lot of other minors as well. Several former fans have come out and shown support for Adam and cited very similar experiences with Colleen. Now the mass media really caught on to this story to the point that Colleen's silence for four weeks and an uncanceled tour was really creating mounting public pressure for a response, which is when she released Hi. Before I can get into the unhinged content of this denial video and dive into the power imbalances of parasocial relationships, I really, I really first just have to point out to have serious accusations against yourself. You, a mother of three, about grooming and being sexually inappropriate with other children, to then think and decide to respond with, let's see. No, 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 no. <sighs> no, I did that idea already. song. That's insane. <laughs> to address something as serious as being a, a predator with like a quirky Zoe Deschanel-esque ukulele song has me convinced 2023 is not real. We are in a simulation. Uh, the writers for this season, they gotta go. Because 
I watched this video and all I could think about as a content creator is how long it took her to make. Message my fans, but not in a creepy way. More like a loser kind of way. That's good, that's good. You know what, I don't think piano is the... Life is like a box of chocolates. Sometimes children say you gave them lingerie. Oh, that's good, that's good, that's good. Bo Burnham would be so into this. Not only did she write this song, but it's in one take. So she had to rehearse this and memorize it. And did she like warm up beforehand? Mommy made me mash my m and Okay, I'm ready. How about you guys? Time to set. All set. Okay. <clears throat> it's even more insane when you consider this performance is 10 minutes long. By far my favorite comment on the piece, this ain't all too well 10 minute version, girl, you groomed kids. Now the not too well performance also included a fake out and several dramatic pauses that she clearly wrote in. She then had to transfer the footage to her computer, watch the various takes she did, choose one, and upload it to YouTube. She could have put this much thought into just like, I don't know, reflecting on her own behavior, but okay, go off. Colleen even acknowledges in this that she she's going against the advice of her team. My team has strongly advised me to not say what I want to say. I recently realized that they never said that I couldn't sing. And at no point during this process and monumentous effort did she stop and think, maybe some of her opinions were not it. All aboard the toxic gossip train, you're chugging down the tracks of misinformation. Colleen insists that she's only going to address the facts, but the facts are the minors coming out have screenshots of her saying explicit things to them. So I'm not sure what world she's living in where this would classify as misinformation. One of the most infuriating parts of her non-apology is that the whole thing, during the entire 10 minutes, she's constantly positioning herself as the victim in this scenario. Many years ago, I used to message my fans, uh, but not in a creepy way like a lot of you are trying to suggest. It was more of a loser kind of way. I was just trying to be besties with everybody. She completely disregards and downplays the power dynamic that she had over a group of children who idolized her. And she also like invalidates the, all of their feelings about her actions. She dismisses this behavior as someone who just overshared and didn't know boundaries, as though those things cannot exist in the same reality as the allegations. Even more infuriating, Colleen claims that everyone's just bringing stuff up from her past for clout? to ruin her reputation, but hey. At least you're having fun. She even ends with the audacious line. What do I know? Fuck me, right? It is really giving me flashbacks to Kevin Spacey's Let Me Be Frank. Of course, some believed everything and had just been waiting with bated breath to hear me confess it all. I know you wanted me to say that I was 100% in the wrong, well, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna take that route. When you consider the fact that most of these minors have gone on the record to discuss the suffering and processing that they've had to do in recent years, this is just one of the most opinions of all time. Centering yourself as the victim when these kids have said they felt humiliated and traumatized is not it. One kid even said that Colleen was their gateway into sexually explicit concepts. One fan, Becky, was 16 when she was brought on stage for Miranda's comedy special in 2018 for a yoga challenge. Now during the challenge, Colleen instructed Becky, who was wearing this short little romper, to lay down on her back. And then Colleen like stretched her legs as wide as they would go. I will not be showing the footage because Becky herself was so humiliated by the incident that she stopped watching Colleen's videos. But Colleen herself, Cannot believe she's being vilified for this. And I'm not a predator, even though a lot of you think so, because five years ago I made a fart joke. But what she fails to recognize is that we're not upset about a fart joke, dude, but instead we're upset that, that there's a clear pattern here of exploiting, sexualizing, and manipulating minors. I think the moment my jaw dropped through the floor it was already sitting on was when she said this. The only thing I've ever groomed is my two Persian cats. I'm not a groomer. I'm just a loser. Okay. But since Colleen doesn't seem to get it, I really think it's important to break this down. Grooming is when someone builds a relationship, 
trust, and emotional connection with a child or young person so they can manipulate, exploit, or abuse them. And that relationship can be a myriad of things. It could be romantic, as a mentor, as an authority figure, even just as a dominant and persistent figure. That is grooming. And whether or not it's your intention, the behavior itself is grooming. When we take into consideration the imbalanced power dynamic in Colleen's parasocial relationships with her underage fans, it made them particularly susceptible to manipulation. Anytime Colleen chose to use them as her own personal validation or mobilized army in her divorce smear campaign, that's grooming. When she asked them for their experiences getting their first periods, which she was likely farming ideas for content, but that's still exploiting a relationship you have with minors for your own professional gain, which is grooming. Colleen doesn't see any of this as problematic because to her she was just being her loser self, you guys. She was lonely, she was messy, she was just oversharing. And yet, claiming to be good friends or wanting to be besties with children when you're an adult in your 30s, that's inappropriate. Being in a group chat with children when you're an adult and bringing up sexual topics, that's inappropriate. Taking advantage of a group of impressionable minors when you know you're in a position of power, a person they idolize, and then utilizing your relationship with them to direct them in whatever way suits you, that's fucking inappropriate. Also, I forgot to say this in the video, but as a thought experiment, to see how inappropriate this is, just flip the genders. If this was a 30-year-old man interacting this way with a 13, 14, 15-year-old girl, Absolutely not. Uh, my guess is there would be jail time. Requesting ass pics, sending lingerie, asking if you're a virgin and what your favorite sex position is. And we haven't even talked about the various consequences for the children who are groomed. Now the impact of grooming can last a lifetime, whether it happened in person, online, or both. It can be short term or long term, but the effects of it are devastating, including anxiety, depression, eating disorders, post-traumatic stress, self-harm, insomnia, feelings of shame and guilt, suicidal thoughts, substance abuse problems, difficulty coping with stress, and more. So yes, Colleen, we're all disappointed in your shitty little song because it fails to recognize the severity of your actions. And look, for the record, I believe people can make mistakes and learn from them. I believe in taking accountability and growing, but that starts with awareness. And that awareness does not exist here. And look, personally, if you ask me, no, I don't think Colleen was like this crouching predator twirling her mustache, using an army of children for her evil whims. But I do think she's wildly immature, defensive, and honestly, mentally unwell. And I, I can have compassion for the fact that she went through a really hard divorce, that she's experiencing public shaming on a global scale, and that the collective turning against you can feel, as she said, like shit. But her reactions to all of those situations, not it. And until she can take responsibility for that and herself, I don't think real growth can happen here. But I think what we can all learn from this situation is that groomers can look like anyone. Female abusers and male victims exist. And that parasocial relationships with celebrities are dangerously imbalanced when it comes to power dynamics, especially for kids. And look, I do think we can live in a space where we acknowledge people's mistakes and give them room to grow, while still holding them accountable for their unacceptable actions. I'm Anna Akana. No one sponsored this, because who would? But felt important to talk about.